An earthquake hit San Benito County just a few hours ago. The U.S. Geological Survey says a 4.1 magnitude earthquake hit north of Pinnacles National Park. Yellowstone National Park, known for its stunning beauty and captivating natural phenomena, has recently experienced a surge in seismic activity. Surprisingly, park authorities have observed hundreds of earthquakes shaking the region in the past few weeks. For many, this has become a bothersome chain of events, which begs the question, is the supervolcano about to erupt? Did the earthquakes truly call for concern? Everything about the park is about to be revealed to you. Yellowstone National Park seems to be making headlines very often lately. According to official reports, the park has been experiencing quite a lot of earthquakes in recent times, which seems to be causing a lot of concerns lately for residents and citizens. While this isn't surprising given the history of the park, the frequency is the problem. For people who aren't really aware of the geography of Yellowstone National Park, it might come as a surprise that earthquakes are deemed a normal phenomenon in the area. After all, considering the magnitude of destruction natural phenomena are capable of, earthquakes only cause destruction and damage, and that shouldn't be what someone looks forward to. However, let's say it's one of the things that makes the park special. One might still wonder what makes Yellowstone National Park special from the other parks, terrains, and landscapes in the world, aside from the fact that the park is a geological comedy, adding mischief to its wild wonders. Well, it's only fair you get the answers you desire to unravel the mysteries behind the ever-occurring earthquakes in the area. You should know that the 2.2 million acres of land captivate the imagination and soul. This is thanks to the diverse wildlife, making it a haven where wildlife photographers and enthusiasts rendezvous to encounter nature. From the grandeur of the American bison, often seen roaming the grassy valleys, to the elusive and majestic wolves that prowl the woodlands, the park provides a glimpse into the delicate balance of nature's intricate web. Aside from those animals, one can also find grizzly bears, moose, pronghorn, bighorn sheep, coyotes, elks, and other animals. It's truly one of those conservative tools of nature. However, we can all agree that doesn't suffice enough to tag the park as one of the most special terrains in the world. What truly makes Yellowstone exceptional is its mesmerizing blend of geothermal features. It boasts over 10,000 thermal features, such as bubbling hot springs, spouting geysers, and vibrant mud pots. You can say to geologists it resembles a vast laboratory of Earth's fiery phenomena. One of the most iconic geysers in the area is the Old Fateful. The rhythmic eruptions from the geyser can go as high as 185 feet, going a long way to prove that the planet packs a distinct amount of energy in its core. Still, that doesn't completely sum up the uniqueness of the park. As a matter of fact, Yellowstone is more than a park that people believe it to be. It houses one of the world's largest volcanic systems, Yellowstone Caldera. Underneath the volcano, one can see the colossal underground reservoir of magma. And this is what heats up the water in the ground, producing various thermal features across the land's terrain. However, that's not the entire reason. Yellowstone National Park is also located in a region where the Earth's crust is thinnest, and the bubbling magma boils closer to the surface than any other part of the world. Hence, the reason for the multiple thermal features being created within the area. Due to the several chain of reactions caused by the boiling magma, the visitors and locals believe there might be a relationship between the several earthquakes and the volcano. They believe that earthquakes are random signs of the volcano preparing to erupt. However, there's not really much backing the claims or fears. As the first national park in the world established in 1872, there's no doubt that Yellowstone holds a cherished place in history and the collective consciousness of humanity. However, the region has some of the highest seismic hazard values in the Intermountain West. On average, the number of earthquakes in the Yellowstone region is mostly between 1,500 and 2,000 annually. The University of Utah seismograph stations were also kind enough to compile a record of the seismic activities in the past decade between 2010 and 2019. 
According to their findings, during the 3,652 days, their stations observed 17,243 earthquakes in the region. This means there was a daily average number of 4.7 earthquakes. Compared to their record for the last decade, the region had an increase of 3,163 earthquakes. Hence the reason why the local folks started to get worried. In its entirety, it's quite crazy, but it gets interesting. It turns out that these numerous earthquakes that the region has been experiencing aren't typical earthquakes, but earthquake swarms. And here comes the question. What is the difference between earthquakes and earthquake swarms? Well, they're actually two distinct geological terms. An earthquake refers to a single seismic event caused by the release of energy in the Earth's crust. This is caused by the movement of tectonic plates or volcanic activity. That said, the actual earthquakes can vary in magnitude. On the other hand, earthquake swarms are more like a sequence of multiple earthquakes that happen in close succession over a short period in a certain area. They're of smaller magnitude, occurring for hours, days, or weeks, and can also show signs of volcanic activity. The main difference between the two geological events is that a single earthquake packs a main shock capable of causing severe damage. In contrast, the shock is almost non-existent in earthquake swarms. However, earthquake swarms could cause landslides, ground shaking, and other minor earthly disasters. Due to these recurring phenomena at Yellowstone Park over the past decade, the place has been a focal point of scientific interest. Coming to you today from a very snowy Norris Geyser Basin, and we're looking at Porkchop Geyser. Yellowstone experiences thousands of earthquakes yearly, ranging from barely perceptible tremors to more significant events that may cause ground shaking. Most of these earthquakes are related to the movement of tectonic plates beneath the Earth's surface. The North American plate, which the park sits on, is slowly moving southwestward. As it interacts with the Pacific plate to the west, it generates stresses that lead to the release of energy in the form of earthquake swarms. Looking at the possibility of the earthquake swarms in Yellowstone showing signs of volcanic activity, it's no surprise that folks are concerned about the volcano resting in the area. However, is there truly a link between these two geological phenomena? Does the swarm of earthquakes mean doom for Yellowstone National Park? Let's delve further into the topic. Are we to expect an eruption from the Yellowstone caldera anytime soon, or is it simply an overhyped concern? Before answering that, let's talk about the Yellowstone caldera. It turns out that what we call calderas are extensive volcanic depressions or craters that emerge due to massive volcanic eruptions. These eruptions release immense quantities of magma and volcanic materials, leading to the collapse of the volcano's summit or the land above its magma chamber. As a result, a substantial bowl-shaped depression known as a caldera is formed. They vary in size, with some significantly larger than typical volcanic craters produced by smaller eruptions. Once formed, calderas may be filled with water, creating caldera lakes or with volcanic material, resulting in volcanic plateaus or new volcanic cones. They're often linked to highly explosive and catastrophic volcanic events like super eruptions, which can have worldwide impacts on climate and the environment. Besides the Yellowstone caldera, others like the Toba caldera in Indonesia and the Santorini caldera in Greece. The geological history of the Yellowstone caldera spans millions of years and is a story of immense proportions. Situated beneath the serene landscapes of Yellowstone National Park, this supervolcano has a turbulent and dramatic past. Over the past two million years, it's experienced a series of explosive eruptions known as super eruptions, surpassing the power of regular volcanic events. To tell how severe these eruptions are, they expel massive volumes of magma and volcanic material, covering several acres of land with ash and debris. The most recent super eruption in Yellowstone Caldera was approximately 640,000 years ago. One can say this eruption shaped the landscape of Yellowstone into becoming what it is today. The eruption was mind-blowing, releasing several thousand cubic kilometers of volcanic material 
enough to cover the Grand Canyon a hundred times over. At the time, the colossal eruption altered global weather patterns and caused significant climate changes. Now, imagine what would happen if the volcano erupts again, the height of damage and destruction it would cause. Let's just say it's one of those events you'd wish to remain behind the screen of a sci-fi movie. The effects of an eruption will be so severe for the residents in the states of Wyoming, Idaho, and Montana, causing the death of humans and livestock. Furthermore, anything related to agriculture would die off, making the lands completely unfit for survival. This would further lead to the desertion of the lands for months or even years. However, we wouldn't be living this nightmare, at least not in this lifetime. According to geological evidence from geologists, the volcano has only experienced three major super eruptions over the past 2.1 million years. They called it the Huckleberry Ridge eruption, the Mesa Falls eruption, and the Lava Creek eruption. The Huckleberry Ridge eruption, which is the most massive, dates back exactly 2.1 million years ago, while the Mesa Falls eruption goes back 1.3 million years ago. The Lava Creek, on the other hand, which happens to be the most recent, occurred 640,000 years ago. Now, considering the time frame for each super eruption, let's say we wager on when the next Yellowstone Caldera eruption will be. A good wager would point towards exactly 150,000 to 200,000 years from now. However, we can't rely only on the probability factor. Thanks to scientists, they've been able to study the eruption history to better understand the geological processes behind the Yellowstone Caldera. Aside from the dating method, another method they've used in observing the volcano state is using a network of seismometers, GPS receivers, and a couple of other geophysical instruments. These instruments are handy for monitoring not just seismic activity, but ground deformation and gas emissions. Regarding ground deformation and gas emissions, scientists have also been monitoring the composition of volcanic gases from the volcano and measuring the ground deformation within and the outer region of the caldera. After several analyses, they've concluded that the Yellowstone caldera is inactive or dormant and would likely never be any imminent threat of a super eruption in the next millennia. That said, you should know that the series of earthquake swarms in Yellowstone National Park do not indicate an imminent super eruption. Instead, the so-called swarms are caused by the movement of fluids and magma beneath the Earth's surface. They're a normal aspect of Caldera's geothermal activity. However, one thing is definitely certain. The series of earthquakes call for concern and should not be neglected in any way. How do we know what we're up against? Is the park really safe? When it comes to life, it's only fair that we tend to be paranoid. After all, as they say, life is precious and has no duplicate. As a result, one might still be perturbed regarding Yellowstone National Park safety, asking, is the park really safe? Well, to properly tend to your concerns, it's only fair that we recognize the heroes behind the scenes. These are none other than the geoscientists and park officials of Yellowstone National Park. The two bodies have vital and complementary roles in understanding the ever-changing geological processes and safeguarding the park's safety and conservation. Geoscientists, for one, are always at the forefront of exploring the intricate geological features of the region, delving into the Earth's depths to unlock its mysteries. Their work encompasses diverse fields, including geology, geophysics, seismology, and geochemistry. One of the primary tasks of geoscientists in Yellowstone is to oversee and analyze seismic activity. They employ a network of strategically placed seismometers throughout the park to detect and record ground vibrations caused by earthquakes. Although most earthquakes are small and go unnoticed by visitors, they provide valuable data about the movement of magma and fluids beneath the Earth's surface. By meticulously analyzing seismic data, Geoscientists can spot patterns and changes in earthquake activity that may indicate potential volcanic unrest. So, one thing is certain, if the Yellowstone caldera goes active, they'll definitely be the first to know. Besides seismic monitoring, geoscientists also track ground deformation, precisely measuring the subtle movements of the Earth's surface. 
it turns out the Yellowstone has experienced uplift and subsidence over time. While these changes can pose as indicators of volcanic activity, we are rest assured by the geoscientists that there's no cause for alarm. They also employ advanced GPS instruments to capture ground movements and gain a deeper understanding of the underlying volcanic system. Another critical aspect of geoscientists' work in Yellowstone is monitoring volcanic gases. Geothermal features such as geysers, hot springs, and fumaroles emit various gases from the underlying magma chamber. By studying the composition and flow of these gases, geoscientists gleam insights into the behavior of the volcanic system. Changes in gas emissions can offer early warning signs of potential volcanic activity and assist in determining the type and magnitude of future eruptions. To also ensure that the park is safe for visitors, geophysicists have habitually analyzed geological formations, volcanic deposits, and ash layers from the volcano. Today, we also have geoscientists like William Henry Holmes and Robert Christiansen to thank for the progress of the geological mapping of the area. Apparently, Holmes produced the first complete geological map of the park in the late 1800s, while Robert improved the details in 2001. Thanks to these men, other geoscientists could go about the proper survey of the park. Simultaneously, park officials also hold several responsibilities in the park although you can say theirs is more intimate than the geoscientists. They don't only manage and conserve the park's resources, but they ensure that the environs are always safe for visitors. They do so by working closely with geoscientists to implement safety protocols and communication strategies during increased volcanic or geothermal activity periods. You can say that these guys play a pivotal role in effectively conveying information to the public and addressing concerns related to any geological threat. So, if by chance there's any in the nearest future, depending on the risks, they'll not only mitigate safety measures, but they can order vacation for the entire vicinity. Park officials regularly engage with the public, providing up-to-date information about the park's geological conditions and necessary precautions. They use various platforms, including visitor centers, interpretive programs, and park websites to educate visitors about the park's geology and potential hazards. Emphasizing the importance of heeding warning signs and staying informed about current conditions, park officials promote responsible behavior and safety within the park. So, it's best to always pay attention to them at all times. Furthermore, Park officials collaborate with local authorities and emergency response teams to ensure emergency preparedness. They develop contingency plans for various volcanic scenarios, outlining evacuation procedures and emergency measures to safeguard visitors and residents in nearby communities. Their proactive approach to emergency preparedness ensures a swift and coordinated response should any volcanic activity warrant immediate action. You can say, collectively, Geoscientists and park officials contribute to continuously monitoring and researching Yellowstone's geothermal activity. Their collaborative efforts ensure that the public can safely appreciate the park's unique geothermal wonders while marveling at the dynamic geological forces that shape this extraordinary landscape. By combining scientific knowledge and prudent management practices, geoscientists and park officials strive to balance preserving Yellowstone's natural beauty and ensuring the safety of all those who visit this remarkable national treasure. Their dedication to scientific inquiry, public outreach, and emergency preparedness exemplifies a commitment to protecting and stewarding Yellowstone's awe-inspiring geology ensuring that this geological wonder remains a source of wonder and inspiration for future generations. That said, you're completely in good hands at all times. Indeed, we're yet to completely unravel the mysteries of this extraordinary supervolcano, but that shouldn't call for concern. When next you visit the park, endeavor to enjoy the tranquil landscapes within. Also, always pay attention to the warning signs set up by park officials. In conclusion, the recent reports from Yellowstone National Park officials about the occurrence of hundreds of earthquakes serve as a significant reminder of the dynamic geological forces in this iconic park. 
While it's natural to feel concerned about seismic activity, it's essential to trust the expertise of geoscientists and park officials who diligently monitor and study Yellowstone's geothermal activity. Stay informed by liking and subscribing to the channel. Till some other time, bye!